What's up, Surveillers? I'm breaking down another video, Avatar The Last Airbender, one of my favorite shows growing up. And this breakdown is going to prove that Hollywood is well acquainted with the scriptures and they know the Bible from the front all the way to the back. Then they create whole TV shows based on the premise of the Bible. Then they reconstruct it so the audience has no clue that they're actually watching something biblical or even prophetic. So let's start off with the book, The Element Encyclopedia of Secret Signs and Symbols, and we'll find the word buffalo. The white buffalo comes with a huge significance attached to it for Native Americans. Do no doubt because the appearance of such an animal is incredibly rare occurrence. Odds of one in a million have been quoted. To them, the appearance of such an animal is on par with the reappearance of Christ. So if the appearance of a white buffalo is equal to or comparable to the reappearance of Christ, who do you think Ang is? Obviously, he is Christ. So with the significance of the white buffalo, which is attached to Native Americans, it was only right for those who found the white buffalo and Ang to at least look Native American. And in fact, the tribe that they're in is called the Water Tribe. And if you type in the Water Tribe and a Native American in the Jumachinator, you get synchronicities, because that's who they are, and that's their belief. Water. Earth. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. So these four nations lived in harmony together. The Water Tribe, the Earth Kingdom, the Fire Nation, and the Air Nomads. And then eventually, the Fire Nation attacked. And we know that this is biblical prophecy because they're using Aang as the reappearance of Christ. So who does the Fire Nation represent? They represent Muslim nations, the Arabs. That's why the Fire Nation synchronizes with in the name of Allah, because this is Jihad. Revelation chapter 13 verse 18. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who have understanding calculate the number of the beast, for there is the number of a man, and his number is 666. If we go to the strong coordinates G5516, you'll find out that the number isn't actually 666, but it's the Greek letters Chi Psi Stigma. Now let's go to the book God's War and Terror by Walid Shabbat, page 369. As soon as I began to examine the Codex Vaticanus, Greek text of the book Revelation, I immediately noticed that the supposed Greek letters Chi Psi Stigma that are used to translate to the number 666 very much resemble the most common creed of Islam Bismillah or Basmila, written in Arabic. Bismila literally means in the name of Allah and is followed by a symbol of cross swords which is used universally throughout the Muslim world to signify Islam. Bismillah, in the name of Allah, is the most commonly used phrase throughout all of Islamadom, even more than the declaration of faith itself, the Shahada time. It is written or recited at the beginning of every letter, every ceremony, every speech, every sacred recitation, every Quranic chapter, and before the slaughter of any animal. In light of this, it is possible that the Apostle John, by receiving his divine revelation, did not see Greek letters, but instead was supernaturally shown Arabic words and an Islamic symbol, which he had then faithfully recorded. So the Fire Nation represents the Arabs, Islam, executing jihad against the nations, all in the name of their god, Allah. And the one nation that they were completely successful in annihilating was the Air Nomads. Why did they destroy the Air Nomads? Who are all these people? I'm not sure. But it feels like I know them somehow. Look, that one's an airbender. And this one's a waterbender. They're lined up in a pattern. Air, water, earth, and fire. That's the Avatar cycle. Of course. They're avatars. All these people are your past lives, Aang. Wow. There are so many. Past lives? Katara, you really believe in that stuff? It's true. When the Avatar dies, he's reincarnated into the next nation in the cycle. So in Aang's most recent life, he was a firebender. And after he dies, the cycle resets, and he's going to be an air nomad. And the Fire Nation knew it. I knew the next Avatar would be born an air nomad. So I wiped out the air temples. But somehow the new Avatar eluded me. So the Fire Nation knew that the Avatar was going to be reborn as an air nomad. So to prevent Christ, the Avatar, from being reborn, 
They just wiped out all the air nomads. Therefore, the world doesn't have a savior, and they can conquer with impunity. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 through 5. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto Elohim, and to his throne. The fire nation is that dragon that stood before the woman. So when she was ready to deliver, they would devour her child as soon as it was born. That's exactly what the fire nation did to the air nomads. They knew that the next nation, the Avatar cycle, would be the air nomads. So they annihilated all the air nomads. Therefore, there will be no Avatar increasing the likelihood of world domination. I knew the next avatar would be born an air nomad, so I wiped out the air temples. But somehow the new avatar eluded me. I wasted the remainder of my life searching in vain. I know he's hiding out there somewhere. The Fire Nation's greatest threat. The last airbender. He said the Fire Nation's greatest threat is the last airbender. The last airbender and Prince of Peace synchronizes because Mashiach, Christ, the Prince of Peace, he is the greatest threat to the fire nation, which is Islam, the followers of Allah. Page 30. In every portrayal of Christ's return to the earth, he is fighting a nation that is today Muslim. Try to imagine how I felt when I read Habakkuk 3, which says in the last days, God, the Holy One, would actually come to the earth on a mission to execute vengeance on T-Man, Arabia, and Kushan, Sudan. I saw the tents of Kushan in distress, the dwelling of Midian in anguish, Habakkuk 3 and 7. Here, Christ fights the battle against Arabia, Sudan, and Somalia, all Muslim nations. I had to ask myself, if Allah, the God of the Bible, are one and the same, why then does the Bible consistently portray God as being on the side of Israel and against the Muslims? As to the question that I asked earlier, what does the Lord do when he comes riding on the cloud? The answer is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 19. He will come to Egypt to execute vengeance. See, Jehovah rides on a swift cloud and is coming to Egypt. The idols of Egypt tremble before him, and the hearts of the Egyptians melt within them. I appeal to the West. Why are no prophecy teachers teaching this? Allah, the idol of Egypt, and all the crescents on top of the mosque will shake and tremble. The book of Amos also ties into these themes. In the prophecy of Amos, we have Lebanon, Gaza, Egypt, and Arabia, all being marked for destruction within the context of the Lord's return. The Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. Amos 1 and 2. Here, the Lord himself roars from Jerusalem. Again, whenever God himself is described as being physically present on the earth, we're reading about the Messiah. Yet, what is he doing in this passage? He destroys Syria, Arabia, Gaza, and Lebanon. Even in Joel 3, where we find the judgment of the nation for dividing Israel, we read, Now what have you against me, O Tyre and Sidon, Lebanon, and all the regions of Philistine, Gaza? Are you repaying me for something I have done? If you are paying me back, I will swiftly and speedily return on your own heads what you have done. It couldn't be more clear. It was as if Jesus himself was speaking directly to Hezbollah, Tyre and Sidon and Hamas, Philistine, and challenging them regarding their bloodlust against the Jewish people. So who does the Jewish people, or Zion, represent in the show The Last Airbender? The Air Nomads. And the Fire Nation is representing the Arab nations that will have a bloodlust for Zion in the last days. Psalms chapter 69 verse 35. For Elohim will save Zion and will build the cities of Judah, that they may dwell there and have it in possession. So when I have Zionists as air nomads, I'm not talking about the people with the tiny hats and the Shirley Temple curls. I'm talking about the true Jews that fit the description in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Page 185. Gideon is crucial if you want to understand what the Messiah would do during his war expeditions after he sets foot on the Mount of Olives to fight for the Battle of Jerusalem. Though it is rarely discussed, Christ, like Gideon, will fight against Midian. The Bible refers to Midian as Ishmaelites, Judges chapter 8, verse 22. They are the descendants of Abraham's fourth son with his concubine Keturah. 
Like Gideon, the Bible portrays Christ as fighting against the inhabitants of Arabia. God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, and His praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed from His hand, where His power was hidden. Jesus in person is returning from battle out of Teman in Arabia. How often is this discussed in churches? Jesus will physically return and will judge not only the inhabitants of Arabia, but also Kush, which includes the modern-day Islamic nations of Sudan and Somalia. I saw the tents of Cushan in distress, the dwelling of Midian in anguish. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. Midian refers to the region east of Jordan River and southwards on into modern Saudi Arabia. This is the heart of Islamic territory. Portrayals of battles like this, with Christ fighting against Muslim nations, are actually found throughout the Old Testament. The book of Numbers, and one of the earliest, clearest and most direct messianic prophecies in the Bible, also speaks about the coming of the Messiah to specifically destroy and conquer these same peoples. The prophecy was made by Balaam and was written to Balak, the king of the Midianites. A star will come out of Jacob, a scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of all the sons of Sheph. Edom will be conquered, Seir his enemy will be conquered, but Israel will go strong. A ruler will come out of Jacob and destroy the survivors of the city. Numbers chapter 24 verse 17 through 19. The Messiah is portrayed as descending from Jacob and possessing a scepter, a clear reference to his future rule over Israel. But what is it he will accomplish when he rules over Israel? He will utterly destroy his enemies, which consequently are also the enemies of Israel. These three names, Moab, Edom, and Seir, are all referring to the same general people and the same general region. It is the peoples who live to the east and southeast of Israel. Is Europe located immediately to the southeast of Israel, or is this the location of Arabia? Ezekiel 35 speaks of the judgment of Mount Seir and connects it with Edom. As you rejoice because of the inheritance of the house of Israel was desolate, so I will do to you, and you shall be desolate, O Mount Seir, as well as all of Edom, all of it. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Greater Edom encompasses the land from Teman to Dedan, which today is from Yemen to Saudi Arabia. When Jesus returns to take hold of his scepter and destroy his enemies, who are they? They are Arab peoples to the east of Israel. After seven days I dreamed a dream in the night, and behold, a wind arose from the sea and stirred up all its waves, and I looked, and behold, this wind made something like a figure of a man come up out of the heart of the sea, and I looked, and behold, that man flew with the clouds of heaven, and whenever he turned his face to look, everything under his gaze trembled. And whenever his voice issued from his mouth, all who heard his voice melted as wax melts when it fills the fire. Fire, Lord Ozai! You and your forefathers have devastated the balance of this world, and now you shall pay the ultimate price! After this I looked, and behold, an innumerable multitude of men were gathered together from the four winds of the heaven to make war against the man who came up out of the sea. This is the interpretation of the vision, as for seeing a man come up out of the heart of the sea. This is whom the Most High has been keeping for many ages, who will himself deliver his creation, and he will direct those who are left. And as for your seeing wind and fire and a storm coming out of his mouth, and as for his not holding a spear or a weapon of war, yet destroying the unrushing multitude which came to conquer him, this is the interpretation. Behold, the days are coming when the Most High will deliver those who are on the earth, and bewilderment of mind shall come over those who dwell on the earth, and they shall plan to make war against one another, city against city, place against place, people against people, and kingdom against kingdom. And when these things come to pass, and the signs occur which I showed you before, then my son will be revealed, whom you saw as a man coming up from the sea. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom Yahushua will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So who did the Avatar? Christ destroyed with the brightness of his coming? The lawless one, who is Fire Lord Ozai. And in the same episode where he's destroyed with the brightness of his coming, the title of the episode is called Sozin's Comment. And that synchronizes with the lawless one, because that's who the Fire Lord is. In fact, in Revelations chapter 13 verse 18, it says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beasts, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. And we know that he is the ruler of the fire nation. And 603 score and 6 
isn't actually the true translation, but it is chai sai stigma that looks remarkably similar to the Arabic words in the name of Allah, which just happens to synchronize with the fire nation. Page 15. Through Muhammad's example of holy war and in many later passages of the Quran, the message is clearly given to Muslims that they are to use warfare to spread Islam and that in doing so, they will be rewarded. Growing up, we were taught that the Fire Nation was the greatest civilization in history. And somehow, the war was our way of sharing our greatness with the rest of the world. Those who believe and adopt exile and fight for the faith and the cause of Allah, as well as those who give them asylum and aid, these are all in very truth the believers. For them is the forgiveness of sins and provisions most generous. In addition to the Palestinian myth and the denial of Israel's tie to the land, it has convinced the West that a minority of extremists have hijacked an otherwise peaceful religion, when in fact mainstream Islam teaches that jihad in Allah's cause with full force of numbers and weaponry is one of its pillars on which it stands. What people fail to recognize is that the issue separating fundamentalists and moderate Muslims is not whether to fight jihad, only who has the authority to declare it and when. In Shia Islam, the concept of al-Mahdi is as tantamount to Islam as Christ is to Christianity, not only for Islam as a religion, but because his arrival is the fulfillment of Islam as a perfect world government. Thus, al-Mahdi is the government, and the government is al-Mahdi, and everything is in Islam to Allah. From our airships we will rain fire over their lands, a fire that will destroy everything. And out of the ashes, a new world will be born. A world in which all the lands are fire nation, and I am the supreme ruler of everything. When the earth is said to worship the dragon, it means the Muslims continue to worship Allah. When they show obeisance and reverence to al-Mahdi, it's not because he's able to win wars, but more precisely, he wins them in the name of Islam against the enemies of Islam. In the Hadith, Muhammad says, as Allah opened with us, so he will close, and with us they will be saved from polytheism. According to Sheikh Abdullah bin Sadek, this means that as Allah opened this religion with the Holy Prophet, so he will close it with al-Mahdi. It's time for this world to end in fire, and for a new world to be born from the ashes. Therefore, Mahdi is the sealer of the appearance of the religion. As the blood descendant of Muhammad, al-Mahdi is the resurrection of his dynasty, as well as the modern successor to the dead king of a war-devastated Saudi Arabia, rising from the ashes of the religion's birthplace to become the emperor of the world. Just as the world will be reborn in fire, I shall be reborn as the supreme ruler of the world. From this moment on, I will be known as the Phoenix King. In Gematria, Phoenix King synchronizes with the Muslim Al-Mahdi because that's who Fire Lord Ozai is. In fact, if you type in the Fire Lord, his name synchronizes with Islamic leader because this is what this entire series is about. The conflict between the forces of good and evil, the son of perdition versus the son of God, which will determine the fate of this entire world.